Hello my friend and welcome to my channel Tidbits and Company. So glad to have you join me today. I just want to bring you along for some of our week's worth of homemaking that we've been doing. And as I do, I would like to discuss five tips to help you fall in love with homemaking. Now I know some of us do homemaking full time and some of us need to fit it into the margins of our lives. But regardless, I believe there can be a lot of joy found in this role as the keeper of the home. Now, I would love to hear from you in the comments. How do you feel about your role as the keeper of your home? Do the everyday tasks, whether they're mundane or not, do they feel joyful for you? Or do they sometimes feel really burden burdensome? These are thoughts I just want to pass by you and hopefully leave you with a little more hope and encouragement to absolutely fall in love with your role as the homemaker. Now today I have a partner in this video who has helped us improve our chicken coop. This company is called Chick Cozy and I'm excited to share with you what they've um, sent us so that we can improve our chicken coop. So stay tuned for that. But I wanted to tell you, I feel like I've reached an interesting place in my life where I actually wake up and wish that homemaking was all I had to do. <laughs> Nevertheless, we've chosen a life where both my husband and I work from home and are running our own businesses. So most days, duty calls. And while I absolutely love sharing online and sharing ideas and inspiration for you guys, truth be told, most days I'd love to simply just wake up and immerse myself into homeschooling with my kids, give them more of my effort, tidy up the home at a more slower, relaxed pace, and just enjoy all things home. Now this has not always actually been the case. I can recall a distinct memory at one point when I was driving to pick up my kids feeling more like a taxi than anything. And I saw a young mom pushing a stroller and um, dragging behind a toddler <laughs> and it, having to chase a preschooler, probably almost running out on the road on a bike. And I just remember feeling like, man, this role that we have is sometimes really degrading and we are worth so much more. And I just remember having those thoughts and feeling discontent in my role as a keeper of my home and a parent. And that was a sad point in my life, but also a turning point as I made quite a bit of effort to change how I felt. And now when I think of that young mom, I often think, or I hope that she knows what a treasure her role is. And I've made it my business and my passion and my goal to make sure that we all do. So let me share these five tips to help you fall in love with your role as the keeper of your home. So my tip number one for you is to find and create beauty all around you. Now, I don't know a single human who doesn't appreciate beauty. And when you do simple things like make the effort to make your bed, um, decorate, clean, set the tone in your home through music and smells. When you make this effort to make your home a more beautiful place, I think you'll be amazed at how you start to see beauty everywhere. And I'm showing you these clips that I took of a very snowy February day for us. And I was just out there in complete awe at the beauty. And it made me want to make my home all the more cozy. It was just kind of, it just spiraled <laughs> out of control this day. And I just craved beauty because I feel like because I have tried to train my eye and to cultivate this talent of being able to see beauty in everything. And it has caused me to want to create more beauty in my life. And that has helped me immensely to just really find more joy in this work as the keeper of my home. And sometimes, you know, beauty is right in front of our faces. I had the opportunity to um, set up a nice dinner situation for my daughter's, um, well, I guess it wasn't a prom, it was a sweetheart's dance at the local high school. And it was just so much fun for me to use my talents and my skills and my desire for beauty to create this for her. Now that leads me into tip number two. And we can find a lot more joy in homemaking when we learn to delight in serving those that we love. A lot of times being a, the keeper of the home equals 
a lot of opportunity for service and it can be such a joy but if we're not careful it can also lead to being um, one of our deepest resentments in our lives and we definitely don't want to go about our work as the keeper of the home feeling resentful to those whom we get to serve or who may enter our home we want it to be something we delight in and so just doing really special things like busting out the fancy china or volunteering to be the one that hosts the dinner even though that's a lot of work and if we just let that feel more like a burden than a joy i think it's going to be hard for us to find a lot of joy in homemaking so take these opportunities and they come in abundance when we're the keeper of the home and to just really delight in serving those you love and of course this can mean in the ways that we set up our home maybe it means you surprise someone your children your spouse whomever is living with you make their bed um, buy them a special chocolate or just show them a bit of love and all of these efforts are just made better when we do those really simple things now of course being a homemaker means that we cook a lot and for me, for many, many years, um, preparing meals, especially when you felt like you were doing it every single second with little kids, um, it can feel really burdensome. But when you look at what a joy it is to feed and to nourish and to rejuvenate those who really trust and rely on you to do these things, cooking can become such a joy. You can improve your skills, get better at things, and just come to really enjoy and embrace every opportunity that you have to serve those whom you love. All right, let's move on to tip number three, and that is to just be proud to be a homemaker. Now, this is hard in this day and age, and I have heard many instances and stories of people particularly young women who go to high school or college and they express their desire to be a homemaker at some point and they are shunned for this and like almost mocked that they even mentioned that desire and I feel like we need to change this and this is going to start with our attitudes absolutely because if we don't have homemakers if we don't have someone who really is proud to be a homemaker I really do fear where we're going to end up in generations to come. I love the quote, she who rocks the cradle rules the world. And I might add, she who cares for the home calms the world. You know, this world can be so upsetting sometimes. And if we care for the home, if we care for those who live with us, and we just care about this amazing responsibility that we have, people are going to feel that around you. Your family's going to feel it and um, you will just be so proud to be a homemaker. Now, I've had an idea to help us all be a little more proud to be homemakers, and I'm excited to share this with you. I need to share with you what I just got in the mail. I'm really, really excited about this. Um, I'm making some merch for us, you guys. Um, so I'm actually wearing this today, but I was inspired by this Homemakers Club Instagram account and podcast. They made these sweaters and then they discontinued them. But I just couldn't help but feel like, isn't it an awesome thing if we could wear our um, appreciation for our role as the keeper of the home and let others know, whether it be you know, our family or the next generation, to let them know how proud we are to be homemakers and keepers of our home. So I decided I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna make merch for us so that we can wear our pride in homemaking. So let me show you what I've got here. So I don't think by the time this video is out, I will have had enough time to get these actually photographed and listed, but stay tuned. <laughs> but here they are. I couldn't decide between logos, so I did a few varieties. This one is more of a blocky one, and then I'd say this is more of a, a cutesy one. I love the symbol of a bee and the hive and keeper of the home, kind of like a beekeeper or the queen bee, if you will. And for those who just love to keep it simple, we just have a pretty font. So let me tell you a little bit about these sweaters. I 
tried out a lot and I wanted to get just the right design. And I wanted something cozy, but not frumpy, if you will. So I love this one. It's got super cozy fleece in the inside. It washes really well. I've tested it multiple times. <laughs> and then it has this cute little V-neck. So it just gives a little shape. And I love raglan sleeves on sweaters. Absolutely love them. So I was thrilled that this one had it as well. We got the ties. And then I love the edging down here. It's just surged, but it kind of rolls up when you wash it um, and gives this really vintage, cool look, like an unfinished look. But man, I love it. And here's the colors. We got this kind of rose pink, this beautiful sage green, lovely blue. Just love that blue so much. This is like a, it's coming across as yellow on the camera, but it's more like an off white. So I really like that instead of stark white. And then a sweet light pink and then a black because sometimes black sweaters <laughs> feel good to wear. So I'll have these colors in every logo option. Let me know what you think. I just think they turned out really cute. Love it. Cannot wait to just Strut the keeper of the home for all to see. I hope you guys will too. Oh, I thought I should add, I, I liked this sweater because it's not super thick. So it's still warm for like winter season, but this is a sweater that you're gonna find yourself wearing all spring. In the summer, like on the evenings, it would be perfect. And um, in the fall, of course. So I just think it's like the perfect all weather sweater so cute i cannot wait to get these photographed and available for you guys all right tip number four that will help you love being a homemaker is to always strive to create order in your home and work on improving your environment this is a never ending <laughs> thing that we must do as keepers of the home. There will always be a need to create more order and to improve things in our home. Now think about like a really well-run business and think about what it might look like. Now I imagine in a business that is really well-run, everyone probably knows where to find things. There are routines and practices that help us avoid chaos. And so when you're thinking about your home and how you can make things just run better, Think of your home like a workplace where you are really aiming for better efficiency and better order all the time. And when you do this, I think you'll find you enjoy your work that much more because a lot of our work is simply that. It is work. It's something we have to push up our sleeves and aim to do to create more order. And I believe that through education and experience, we we have or we can become more equipped with skills to run an orderly home. Now this work, though sometimes is very challenging, there can be a lot of joy to be found. And something that I've tackled lately, our, our seeds and everything have just been a chaotic mess. And every year we go and buy seeds that we probably already have. And so this was something that I wanted to improve recently is to get all the seeds out, all our garden supplies, that we need to like prep for the next growing season and to get them really orderly. And I've just been amazed already as we're looking through seed catalogs and dreaming up our garden. It is so nice to just pull this out. What do we have? What do we need? And it just, it feels more orderly and therefore there is so much more joy. And that is a really important principle to grasp onto if you're hoping to enjoy your work as a keeper of the home a little bit more. So just remember that, look around and strive to create more order and always work on improving your environment. Now we found a home in itself always <laughs> gives you enough to do with creating more order in your home, but running a homestead and trying to be more self-sufficient also brings a lot of opportunities. And we've been trying to improve our chicken coop. My husband actually pulled down the other one, salvaged as much wood as he possibly could because the first one we built was just not working and not efficient. So he has been working on this other coop. And this is what I wanted to tell you about these amazing automatic doors from Chick Cozy. 
We have been absolutely in love with this. It is a battery operated automatic door that you can set to like open with light or put it on timers. And this door will keep out predators and keep your chickens in when you need them to be. And it's been a huge game changer for us and it's just been an amazing thing to help us improve our coop. So they come in color green and I believe they also have yellow. But as you can see here, they're very easy to install through a cutout in your chicken coop. In this instance, we've installed one door that will lead to the chicken run and another one um, we have the hole in as soon as the snow melts to be able to lead them to just free reign outside. So we are going to actually end up putting two of these chick cozy doors in. But I gotta tell you, this improvement that we've made in our chicken coop has been pretty amazing. My husband did so many sketches on how he wanted this and he's created um, this awesome place where we can gather the eggs where they actually roll down. We're still trying to train these chickens to, to lay in the correct place. Um, sometimes we find them all over the, the ground, but it's been really nice because if those eggs stay there, oftentimes we get birds or things that come in and get them or the chickens themselves will eat them. So we're trying to train them to lay where they're supposed to. But this coop is like sectioned out. We've got the run, of course, that they love to go out during the day. And this time we did a rock foundation with a lot of wire so that these raccoon buggers don't <laughs> or can't dig under and um, do what they've done and just create absolute chaos for us. So anyway, this automatic door has been really nice to allow them to get out into that run. And then of course we have the section that they stay in at night and that keeps them nice and warm and cozy. The other part my husband built in this chicken coop was designed for us to be able to get more chicks and allow a place for them to um, get older before we put them out in the big coop with the other ones. So we had to go get more chicks and test this out. It's the coolest thing that he's got here in this like extra room where we can now just layer on more bedding and get these little chicks grown up but it's just so sweet we we absolutely love this stage and find a lot of joy in it and i gotta tell you my husband has just been <laughs> so much happier with this improvement and that just again shows me how much improving your home improving your environment improving the order in which you do things can really bring you a lot of joy now i want to i want to talk with you a little bit about the different order and routines that we've made around cleaning our home. Now, this may not work if you've got little kids, but my youngest is now 10, which I can hardly believe, and this is a new routine that we've put into place that has been amazing. So every Saturday is our cleaning day, and my husband will take one kid, I'll take one kid, and then we partner two kids up together and we split up the home and um, each uh, team, we call it, <laughs> gets their own spaces that they work on together. And in this way, every single week, our entire home is getting cleaned. It's been amazing. But what's been really good about this is that whether it's my husband or I, whatever kid we're partnering with, it's an amazing opportunity to actually teach them how to clean better. You know, sometimes we get frustrated that our kids just are sloppy in their cleaning and they don't do a good enough job, but this has just transformed everything because as I work my way around with partnering with each kid, they observe what I'm doing and they appreciate that mother's touch and they see how I can bring a space um, to feeling cluttered and disorderly to more clean and calm and slowly they are watching me. I give them tasks they, they can handle, but um, my daughter always comments that somehow the bed is just more cozy <laughs> when I make it and they really appreciate that. And so sometimes, you know, if the kids that are partnered up together, they may not do a great job, but um, eventually a parent works around to each space and together our home has stayed really organized and clean. So there's a little tip for you. Okay, tip five, we're moving on. My last tip, always be learning new skills. Now this keeps you from getting bored because there is so much to learn about homemaking. I've heard it said once that homemaking 
would actually require several master degrees with all that you have to learn. So something I've been learning lately that you can see me doing here is I've been wanting to learn how to take care of our hair in a more natural way. There's four of us girls, we have a lot of hair, and so I've been trying to find ways to um, take care of it more naturally. So I just made this um, heat protectant hairspray which has been really nice. So I have a recipe for that on my blog that you can go over and check out if you're curious, but it's made from all natural ingredients and has been amazing at keeping our hair moisturized and um, protected from like all the heat tools that we use. All right, now another way to always be learning new skills is of course in the kitchen and in the garden. And these carrots actually came from our garden in February. We're still getting carrots to grow. That's because my husband has constantly been learning about winter gardening and it's been really fun. Now canning and food preservation is always a great thing to learn. Now we ran out of applesauce the other day <laughs> and we were so disappointed that we didn't can enough and then it dawned on me like we can still get apples and preserve them and so I ordered a bunch from Azure Standard and we made some more applesauce. It's just these little things that you're learning that can support you in your role and just help you find more joy. Well, my friends, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you feel inspired and I hope you've come away with some great tips to help you fall in love with homemaking. It is such a joy for me to share with you and I appreciate every week that you come back and spend a little time with me. Now, I will be back very soon to share more inspiration for the keeper of the home, but if you'd like more right now, please head over to my blog at tidbitsandcompany.com.